Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Daniel, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to containerize an application using Docker. Whether you're just starting with DevOps, or you're a developer wanting to simplify deployment, this tutorial is for you. But before we get started, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more similar content. Now let's dive right in. Let's start by having a quick look at what exactly is Docker. Docker is a platform designed to make it easier to create, deploy, and run applications by using containers. A container is a lightweight, standalone, executable package that includes everything you need to run a piece of software, like code, libraries, settings, and dependencies. It allows you to package your application and its environment together so that it can run consistently across different systems. But before we can start, make sure you have Docker installed on your local system. Head over to the Docker website and download Docker Desktop if you're on Windows or Mac, or follow the installation steps if you're on Linux, those you can find here and depending on the Linux distribution you have, just follow the instructions. Once installed, you can check if Docker is working by opening a terminal and typing Docker version. As you can see, I have Docker version 27.3.1 and the build commit is referring to the Docker repository source code. Now that Docker is set up, let's move on to containerize our first application. In this video, we'll containerize a simple Node.js application, but the process is similar to other type of applications. To follow along, you can find the link in the description for this GitHub repository. Open a terminal and just clone the repository. And open it with Visual Studio Code or any other code editor you use. Go to index.js. As you can see, it's a simple to do Node.js app. Now, the first step in containerizing an app is creating a Docker file. The Docker file tells Docker how to build the image for our app. Let me break this down for you. It's starting with an argument node version, which holds the version of the base image used. Next, we set the working directory inside the container. This is where our application files will reside when the container runs. After that, we handle dependencies. Rather than copying all the files right away, we first install the necessary dependencies using NPM. To do this efficiently, we leverage Docker's caching mechanisms. The mount options help us to bind mount package.json and package lock.json, so they are accessible to the container for installing dependencies, but we don't copy the entire project yet. Mount a cache at slash root slash dot npm to speed up builds by avoiding re-downloading the dependencies each time. The npm ci with the flag omit dev command ensures only production dependencies are installed, leaving out development dependencies since we're building for a production environment. Once the dependencies are installed, we set the application to run as a non-root user by switching to node with the user node command. This is a best practice for security, ensuring the container isn't running as the root user unnecessarily. Next, we copy the rest of the source files into the container using copy dot. This command takes everything from the current directory and puts it into the containers slash usr slash src slash app directory. Then, we expose port 3000 so the container can communicate with the outside world on that port, as that's where our app will be running. Finally, the command cmd node src slash index.js is used to start the application. When the container is run, this is the command that will be executed, starting the app with node.js. With this, our app is fully containerized and ready to be built into a Docker image. Open a terminal and let's run the application. We have a few options to do that. First, we can do it using the docker build command. So use docker build t todo app colon latest dot. This will build the docker image of the app. 
It will take a few seconds depending on your internet connection. We can check it by using Docker images. Now to run it directly, we can use docker run p3000 3000 to do app dot latest. Now we can visit localhost colon 3000 to check the app. This is our very basic to do app. You can play around with it. Press Ctrl C to stop it. Another way is to use a Docker Compose file. This is the structure of a Docker Compose file. It starts with the services key, which defines the individual services or containers that will be run. In this case, there is one service named app. You can change it to any name you want. Then, the build section specifies that the app service should be built from the current directory. Indicated by context, dot dot docker will look for the docker file, which we previously reviewed, in this directory, to know how to build the image. The environment section is used to define environment variables that will be passed to the container. Here, node env is set to production, which is typically used to specify that the application should run in a production environment. The port section maps ports from the host machine to the container. In this example, port 3000 on the host is mapped to port 3000 on the container, meaning the application running inside the container will be accessible from outside on port 3000. Now to start the application, we will use docker compose up dash d. Check the running containers with docker ps and we can visit localhost port 300 again to confirm it's working there's a third way which combines the first two methods we can build the docker image first and then use the docker compose file to run it edit the docker compose file and replace the build section with an image we built before now run docker compose up dash d and docker ps to verify. Let's check localhost 3000 again, and there you have it. We've just taken a simple node.js app and containerized it using docker. Now you can apply these steps to your own projects, whether you're working on Python, Java, or any other language. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. Feel free to drop any questions in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.